What up, what up, everybody? Thank you for pressing that play button and stopping by. This video is really for my real estate investors out there. So if you are an inspired investor looking to get started, looking for your first project, or you're an experienced investor, then this video is for you. You're listening to the Mortgage Wise Radio Show and Video Podcast. It's absolutely crucial. To find out more and for the podcast library, visit themortgagewiseradioshow.com or call 504-270-2783. Now back to the show. Hi, I'm Randy Chambers, the executive director of the Louisiana Housing Authority, corporate branch manager with Geneva Financial, a financial educator, a speaker, and also the co-host of the Mortgage Wise Radio Show and Video Podcast. So today, I want you to think about for a moment, listen, have you ever considered as a real estate investor, right? If you had another opportunity to work on a project other than the current one you're working on right now, right? In other words, you have one project, you have all your cash tied in, but all of a sudden you get access to another deal, but you can't really close that deal because all your cash, your capital is tied up in this one investment. Well, today I'm gonna to give you some solutions, right? So in this world of real estate investing, there's only a few ways that you can purchase properties and hold for cash flow or purchase them and rehab and sell them. Number one is all cash. Number two, you might be using your IRA. Uh, number three, the traditional lending, right? Going to the traditional way, getting a loan, et cetera. Number four is gonna be hard money, right? And number five, I'm introducing you to this today, it's called hybrid financing, right? Hybrid financing for our real estate investor. So let's talk a little bit about the all cash option. And that means you're using all your cash in your bank account to be able to purchase properties and hold them, right? All rehabbing themselves, right? But you're, all your cash is tied up, right? Number two, I've seen people use credit cards, right? Using their credit cards, they have business lines of credit, maybe 50,000, 60,000, 100,000. It's not hard to get business credit, guys. Uh, if you need that strategy, we can be able to help you with that process. But people use their business cards to be able to buy properties, rehab, and resell. Okay, that's an option, right? But the interest rate is pretty high because, again, it's credit card. The next option is basically to be able to use their IRA, right? You can use a self directed IRA, meaning that if you have IRA funds that's in a retirement account, you can roll that money over to a self directed IRA and that gives you checkbook control. And you can buy property, rehab it, and flip it. But the catch is, when the profits come back, the profit has to go to the IRA, right? Right. And then lastly, you have what you call hard money. Hard money is an opportunity for you to get access to capital. The capital is a little higher. The interest is higher, right? Um, but the benefit is that the closing is super, super fast, uh, literally in two weeks, one week in some cases, right? And then also there's limited to no documentation. Oftentimes it's just an ID. Um, and a good deal, right? Um, and then you have what we're gonna talk about today is hybrid financing. And that is a middle, in the middle ground between the hard money lender and a traditional financing, right in that middle, right? So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna give you some benefits. With hybrid lending, real estate investments, there is no debt to income ratios that are considered, right? It's not a part of the guidelines, right? So you don't have to worry about your DTI, right? Next, 660 credit score, FICO, right? Sometimes we could do a 640, but about a 660, the debt does not show up on your credit report. So you could have multiple projects going on, two, three, four different projects going on all at the same time, and it would never show up on your credit report. Why? Because it's a business to business loan. These hybrid uh, real estate investment loans I'm talking about, they are business to business, but it does have a personal guarantee. So you have an inquiry on your credit report just to see what's on it, but it's not gonna be a debt attached, which means that in the future, when you're trying to buy another home for you personally, you're buying something um, for your family on credit, your debt to income ratio is not gonna get out of whack, right? So keep that in mind. Also, you put down 20 to 20 for 20 to 25% down of the purchase price and the rehab budget is 100% financing, right? So think about that for a moment. Typical closing costs involved, you have your title settlement fee, so whatever title company you use, uh, they have their own third-party fee, so you'll pay that. 
Uh, typically, I see maybe about $2,500. You would just put that up there as an estimate. Secondly, you're going to have your third party fee of your builder's risk insurance. That builder risk policy might be coming in, coming in about $1,200. And then you have your property taxes. So let's say that the property taxes for the rest of that year is $1,500, right? So that, that cost is in it. And then you have your origination fees, right? So there's an origination fee that goes along with these hybrid real estate investment loans because it's short-term loans, right? It's not a 30-year mortgage. This is for our fix and flip product. It's only 12 months. So they charge in, uh, origination fees to better get some interest up front. But here's the great thing. There's no pre-penalties involved with that, right? You can sell the properties, no prepayment penalties. And then also you can buy the property from a wholesaler, right? Oftentimes, lending institution, if you're buying and working with a wholesaler, they're not going to allow that assignment of contract, especially in the traditional industry, right? But with this hybrid real estate financing, it will allow you to purchase a property or uh, get an assignment from a wholesaler to purchase your property. And these properties are residential properties from single family homes up to four units. And the seller can contribute to your closing costs, right? So those third party fees we just talked about, the seller, if they're open to it and willing to do that, they can um, give you some cash back towards your closing costs, right? So the documentation is very, very minimal. We're talking about an ID. We're talking about some bank statements just to prove that you have enough cash to close, right? To pay your closing costs and also your 20 to 25% down of the purchase price. Your rehab budget, a detailed rehab budget. So if you say replace doors, details is how many doors, right? If you're going to replace windows, how many windows? If you're going to put in a, a wood fence, how many, how much of the linear feet of that wood fence that you're going to purchase? So a detailed rehab budget. And then also, of course, your business documents, your articles and corporation, um, your, um, your operation agreement, right? And that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much it. Of course, the purchase price, right? So those are the limited documents uh, that you need to provide for this hybrid real estate uh, investment financing. So we talked mostly about buying a property, rehabbing, and reselling the property. But we also have hybrid real estate investment long-term loans, which are 30-year term loans, fixed rate, right? So the rate will never change. This is for mostly for our individual who's gonna hold for cash flow. Now, let's change gears a little bit, right? And talk a little bit about hard money lending because we have access, like if you contact me, I'm gonna give you access to the hybrid real estate investment loans, right? And we can talk about it more in detail once we have our free phone consultation. But also I wanna share with you, we do have private money, right? It's a hard money, but it's private. And here's the criteria. 65% of the asset value we will lend right? Now, you don't need no documents except for an ID and your business entity documents because you're going to be closing in your business name just like the hard money uh, information we just went over. So we need to see the business documents, make sure that it's accurate, that making sure that the Secretary of State uh, have confirmed you, and then an ID and then also an appraisal, right? We want to make sure that the property appraised, whatever that as is value, on that appraisal report, we're going to use that times 65% and that will be the, the loan amount. And also just your bank statement because I need to see, make sure that you have enough cash to close, right? So now that particular product, that could get done in about a week, week and a half. It just depends on how quickly the appraisal could give you that report back. You can order a report, right? And once that report comes back, that's when we'll be able to close. Now, so let's change gear a little bit and talk about our commercial lending for real estate investors, right? So we lend on commercial office buildings, right? Uh, Multi-family uh, homes, multi-unit, and then also mixed-use properties, right? Now, typically, these does not need um, rehab, if you will, right? And typically, it's 30% down of the purchase price and, of course, your traditional closing costs. So that's available to you. So I hope you found some value in the information I shared with you. Make sure that you pause this video, rewind it, get an ink pen, have a pad to write on because note takers I found are money makers, right? So take some copious notes, write down any question you have, call me or text me 
directly at 504-270-2783 and I'll schedule a free phone consultation with you to answer those questions to make sure that you can get the ball rolling. So you may be asking yourself, Randy, why should I listen to you? One of my favorite books says, prove all things, right? So my background is real estate development and we have purchased properties, many properties we purchased, rehabbed them and resold them in the New Orleans, greater, uh, greater New Orleans market, right? To a point where we started teaching people how to invest in real estate. What is an after repair value? How to calculate your numbers profit? How to calculate a construction budget? We're well, giving people access to the capital, right? Like right now, like I'm giving you access to capital. To the point where we started building new construction homes in the Gentilly, New Orleans area, right? From the ground up, right? We did major rehabs where we tore, tore down everything and started all from the foundation. We have even done real estate investment tours, right? We had a group of students that they paid for a class. We went into one of our new construction homes, uh, some of our new construction homes, and we put up tables, right? Chairs, and we actually had class about how to invest in real estate in some of our properties, right? And then from maybe about nine o'clock to 12 o'clock, we were just in the books, we was in the curriculum. And then we had a tour bus came, right? The tour bus came, picked the students up, and we toured the New Orleans Gentilly area about an hour or two, right? And we was going from property to property that our real estate investment team was either rehabbing or we was building from the ground up. They got to see different stages of the process from you know just raw land to the framing to the float and tape and texture of the sheetrock, all the way to putting that last touch of paint on a door walking out. They had the opportunity to see that. We brought some subject matter experts in uh, from uh, home inspectors, uh, from title uh, companies, owners. And you know we wanted to give the students access to our real estate investment team so they could be comfortable and confident. So that's why right, you should listen to me because I know what I'm doing. I purchased my first home in 2006, guys. I was 26 years old. And 30 days later, I bought my first duplex, guys. My first cash flow duplex 30 days later, again, at the young age of 26 years old. People started asking me, Randy, what did you do? How did you overcome your situation? What situation you asked? Well, in 2005, if you've been following me, you heard my story many times. I was broke. I was busted. I was broke in and I hit rock bottom when Hurricane Katrina hit because I lost everything I owned in that, that storm. Water was to the roof, couldn't save not even one photo, right? Did you hear me? And I remember sitting in my sitting in Atlanta in a hotel room and I was kind of hunched over the edge of the bed. My feet was flat against the floor and I was just staring at the TV, guys, and I saw, right, a grocery store near my home, right? Uh, in fact, if you guys are familiar with Legion Fields and Robbie Elite, that was a grocery store called Ferreras, right? And that grocery store had water above it. And I knew I was within that area, right? So immediately I started thinking, you know, what am I going to do? I started thinking, Randy, you are homeless. I, I started thinking, how are you going to pay for this hotel room? You had less than $500 in your bank account. Like, you're going to get put out, right? And I remember thinking these thoughts, and I and I remember my heart pounding, and, 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 and as I watched those videos and listened to the, the newscast, and then I also heard another voice saying, Randy, it's going to be okay. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you, right? And so I was able to overcome this situation because within that year, between 2005 when Hurricane Katrina hit when I was homeless, all the way into December 2006, I was working on my credit, guys. I was working on my savings. I went from being in a negative cash flow cycle, meaning I had more bills left over at the end of the month than I did cash, you know what I mean, right? To being in a positive cash flow cycle, where I had more cash left over at the end of the month than I did bills, right? So I was able to have a savings. I was able to raise up my credit score, and I was educating myself on the real estate process, right? And then I was able to purchase my home. And then everybody wanted to know, how did I do it? And so me, I started teaching people. I started sharing my resources, just like I share resources today, right? And then more and more people started asking about it. And I found my passion, guys. And I said, you know what? I need to get licensed to do this. Because I was referring people to certain individuals at that time as a, in the mortgage banking industry. So I connected with them, got coaching from them, got a mentor. Uh, the owner of this 
um, financial service company, took me to this wing, and then I got licensed. I became a licensed margin loan originator back in 2008. So I say all that because I've seen a lot of changes that have gone and came in the real estate and the markets industry. And so I certainly could guide you through this pandemic that we're having right now. So pick up the phone, guys, if you're a serious real estate investor, call me at 504-270-2783. God bless and enjoy the rest of your day on purpose. And I mean that. That brings today's show to a close. Oh, come on! Thank you for listening to the Mortgage Wise Radio Show and Video Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to share it with a friend and subscribe. Please follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at the Mortgage Wise Radio Show. If you want to learn more about what we talked about today, give us a call at 504-270-2783. Or to view our podcast library, please visit our website, themortgagewiseradioshow.com. Autobots, roll out. Until next time, choose to have a great day on purchase, mortgage-wise friends. Go home.